this is not your regular programming. Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Pierre Sondergaard. I'm a texture artist in visual effects. Welcome to my podcast. Let's be honest, a life and a career as a working artist can be very fulfilling, but it's not for the faint of heart. It's filled with challenges and obstacles, and the path forward is not always clear or simple. On this podcast, we discuss all of this openly and honestly with experienced artists who have already walked that road. That's why I call it the Naked Texture Artist. There are many podcasts that focus on and celebrate all the big achievements in visual effects and animation. But my career as a texture artist has not been one unending victory lap. So personally, I'm more interested in learning how my fellow artists handle the hard things, when things don't work, when things break, or when we're expected to produce the impossible. All of that stuff that takes place behind the curtain. So I invite you to join me on this journey. Hopefully together we can learn from the artist who went before us, save ourselves some scars and some tears, and increase our joy as working artists. Welcome to the Naked Texture Artist. I woke up with murder on my mind, said Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen, after comprehensively thumping the New England Patriots in a perfect game. The game before, he'd been beaten on his home ground by a heady cocktail of the elements, inept management on his side, and clever gamesmanship on the opposing side. The press and opposing fans were only too happy to ridicule him and gleefully cancel his status as one of the best new players in the sport. He was angry. Not lashing out in a rage, but steely determination, cold fury with no mercy. His anger was to score every single time he had the ball in his hands. Away at the local bitter rival's home turf. The opposing coach, a legend of the game, was forced to pay his respects afterwards in the locker room. But what stuck with me was his explanation to the journalists after the game. I woke up with murder on my mind. Going to bed, seeing the sack strike over, waking up the next day has dislodged something in me. No, this is not the thoughtful mark with a calm and sensible little insert. This is a rant. That tension of seeing the approaching calamity like a tornado on the horizon slowly creeping closer and closer to you All the while you pray and hope that it will pass you by as it wrecks house after house in its path. We've all played different roles from the full gamut of human experience. Some were flattened straight away, wailing and teeth gnashing. Others thought they'd proved their house against hurricanes and maybe bought enough time to think they would ultimately ride it out only to fall later. Some survived miraculously unscathed, maybe thinking it was their choices and wisdom that led them to that place, while others, perhaps with more experience, realized it was just pure luck that their house was untouched by the storm. Living through all of these things over this prolonged standoff must have touched us all mentally. But as relief turns to celebration for a lot of people, I I can't celebrate. People celebrate as the war is over, but the ones whose loved ones paid the ultimate sacrifice on the battlefields are probably not celebrating at all. After all, it's not a good thing that has started, only a bad thing that has ceased to be. I absolutely understand why the writers and the actors went on strike. What they asked for, I do not begrudge them. I'm happy for them. But these strikes have done something to me. Living through them has dislodged something in me, changed how I see things. It's not about being unemployed. 
that is not what this is about. Sadly, that is a byproduct of the industry we live and work in. You learn to always sleep with one eye open. I've been unemployed before. It's absolutely undesirable, but it's not the end of the world. At least for me. I make contingency plans. Maybe others are not so fortunate. I have this friend who has this thing that he keeps saying. We live in Montreal. He says he loves Montreal, but Montreal is a city that doesn't love you back. My good friend Chris Nichols, the guy who painted the textures for Thanos. And if you haven't already listened to all our Chris Nichols episodes, what are you doing here? Get after it. Chris said that visual effects has given artists an opportunity to relatively easily making a living from doing art. And it's true. Artists of all times, whether painting scenes from a bison hunt on the wall of a cave at a time immemorial to man to our day, have always had a hard time fitting into this world to have gainful employment and to make a decent living commensurate with their talents from their very artistic abilities. Sadly, that's been true in all ages, which has given rise to the concept of the starving artist. Like Chris said, the effects has created a little bubble, a place where visual artists could go and make a living. But these strikes, I feel the wool has been lifted from my eyes. We may love our work in visual effects, but visual effects doesn't love us back. Our livelihood depends on an industry that fundamentally cares little for our existence. The strikes have illustrated in a very clear way that our house does not have a hurricane shelter. It is not a sustainable situation to be in. During the strikes, I tried to stay away from doom scrolling the news to see if there was any progress made. I mean, if you care about your sanity, you have to, really. But at points here and there, I couldn't help myself. And I ended up reading an incredibly thought-provoking article on the No Mercy, No Malice blog, where Scott Galloway competently argued that the film studios with these strikes are arguing over pennies because the real money is flowing to another place. Short-form streaming services like YouTube and TikTok are stealing the film studio's lunch at an alarming rate. With that in mind, what has taken place with these strikes looks more and more like a fight over lifeboats as the ship is sinking. We as artists are sitting on a shrinking life raft Add that to the general callousness of most visual effects studios in terms of how staff is treated as a disposable commodity. Nah, I'm in no mood to celebrate. Do we honestly believe there will be visual effects budgets in the future world of TikTok videos? Will high-end visual effects as we know it die out? like how the ancient engineers knew how to build impressive aqueducts during the Roman Empire. And when that empire fell, the knowledge and ability was simply lost. Will we look back on Avatar 2 or other recent visual effects high watermarks, the way we look at the pyramids today and wonder, how on earth did they do that back then? I don't know. But looking at the economic data is not encouraging. I love this work. I think you know. So seeing these things, which I can't really unsee, I can't really celebrate. From where I stand right now, with what I know, one tornado has passed over us. But what will hit us in years to come will be child's play in comparison over and out thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us we have a tiny bit of housekeeping to do on the way out 
if this episode has been helpful to you, why not share the podcast with your colleagues and friends? If you'd like to support the podcast, I'd appreciate if you bought me a coffee. You can do that on coffee. That is spelled ko-fi.com forward slash the naked texture artist. One word. If you have suggestions, comments, or questions, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to drop me a line on the naked texture artist at gmail.com. That is the naked texture artist written out in all one word at gmail.com. As I mentioned, having a busy day job in visual effects means my release schedule for this podcast can be a bit irregular. So if you don't want to miss out, subscribe to The Naked Texture Artist wherever you get your podcasts. Or follow the podcast on the socials, then you'll be alerted when the next episode drops. The music in this episode was Awake by Tycho. Nick Sifoni helped put the sound together and everything else was done by me, your host, Mark Pierre Sondergaard. Speak to you soon.